into the into the sports, the boxing and the wrestling scene over here. And then over, on this other side was was just game banging and dope dealing. So all the stuff. And so with all of them, I just seen like I was in the middle of these these worlds. I'm seeing like man, opportunity, but at the same time, uh, great. I don't know what to call it. Just um, uh, inequity. You know, mm-hmm. like where it's like man, it doesn't seem like there's opportunities available, even if you have if you're talented. So um, so yeah, just this was a. Uh, uh, yeah, the seeing those two worlds. Mm-hmm. What, what what was in in those two worlds? What was that thing that would like begin to to capture your attention? Where you were like, okay, there something is yeah. not right here. Yeah, I think just you know the lack the lack of uh, fathers in the, okay. in the in the hood, um, or, or even fathers that are uh, there but they weren't present. Mm. So just the um, that that started to mess with me mm-hmm. um, quite a bit. Um, to to be a man that. I think my probably my only birds and bees conversation happened with the leader of a gang. You know, wow. that was my first and probably only conversation about the birds and bees. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was the person that spent the time to talk to me about those deeper things that that that, that you really don't get a chance to talk about. Mm-hmm. Just try, find out in a locker room, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So okay, so I'm I'm looking here, and you know, the the people, some of the folks that you're dealing with. Well, I'm just going to read read the the, the stats here. Um, 75% in the community where you're serving are living at or below poverty level. Yeah. And then you just mentioned the fathers, yeah. fatherlessness or absentee um, yeah. fathers. Um, being that you're leading uh, this tremendous ministry, how do you think your role has some type of connection to what you were experiencing when you were coming up? Yeah, so uh, I think it was a guy named John Eldridge. He wrote a book, Wild at Heart, and he, he made a statement that says that your greatest passion often comes from your deepest hurt. Yes, say your, that one more time. Your greatest passion often comes from your deepest hurt. Mm-hmm. And uh, oftentimes people will read a million books trying to find out what their passion is, but they stop for a minute and exegete their life or look back at their life and find out, well, man, what bothers me, what hurts yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. And then they'll find out their passions. For me, it was like, man, there's a lot of people with a lot of talent, a lot of ability, um, these diamonds in the rough um, that, that cats really wouldn't spend time with. Mm-hmm. And, and quite frankly, as it relates to the church, it seems like the dudes that were like me, they're a little well, way rough around the edges, there wasn't a place for us. Mm-hmm. There wasn't a place for me to plug in because I wasn't, I didn't fit the, I didn't, I didn't talk like none of these cats. I didn't do any of that yeah. stuff. So where do, um, so for me, it's like, man, how do I make space um, for everybody, male, male and females? But my personal passion is for dudes. Like, how do I get these cats um, that are faithful, available, and teachable in one way, shape, or form, and let them like let them know that they got value. Wow. Did you? Okay. So okay. So I, I got to build. We got to build the story a little bit because I really yeah. need. I need West Michigan to get why you are where you are and doing doing what 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 you're doing. You know, you you had humble beginnings. We'll just put it like that. Okay. We don't have enough time to yeah. to let you talk about all that. But where did you see the uh, pastoral ship yeah. uh, come in? And yeah. So just the just the forty second version. So I was out in the street just banging a little bit. A lot of it, and uh, and just a lot of people start getting hurt. My brothers and stuff got shot, and I ended up running in uh, to to Georgia. Became a bodyguard, ended up homeless, uh, in in North Carolina, and uh, basically lost my mind. Um, PTSD was real for a gangbanger, mm-hmm. and so I ended up coming back to to Michigan, and then uh, went to Detroit. Lived in Detroit several years, and a dude. I was walking up the. I was walking, and this dude was just like, man. I think maybe you, you're called to be a pastor, mm-hmm. and nobody never said that to me. And then what was what I seen as it relates to a pastor? It wasn't the dude sitting with the gaiters with his legs crossed, <laughs> Come looking, on. trying to look sexy. You Come know what on. I mean? <laughs> yeah. You know I mean, like it, it was a dude that was a real dude from Buffalo, New York. That that was a real man that was out there rolling his sleeves up, getting in the dirt, grinding mm-hmm. with cats. Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, that's what it means to be a pastor. Give me that. Mm-hmm. You know. So that was my introduction to what ministry looked like. Mm-hmm. And then, and so then, my first church I planted was in a homeless shelter. Okay. In, in, wow. In, in Detroit. Uh-huh. Okay. Downtown Detroit. Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, listen, Troy. There are listen. You. There are a ton of mis- of men who are listening to you 
right now who are in those places of humble beginnings. Maybe there's some who even, uh, you know, are find, find themselves right now currently, you know, um, in gang life or whatever the case yeah. may be. You are a voice of inspiration. Um, we, we have some, some ladies even uh, yeah. who, who are listening, and they're in places of feeling like, you know what, I don't know if my life is going to ever get mm. any better. I feel like there's something in you at this present moment that can speak uh, life to, to those men and yeah. those women. What would you say? I would say, you know, what's important to you. Core values will direct you when you, when you, don't, when you can't hear from God or you can't hear from others. Your core values will guide you. So mm -hmm. what's important to you? Mm -hmm. Cats immediately say, like, yo, my, my mama is important to me. My kids are important to me. Getting my money is important to me. Mm -hmm. Then my question, next question for you is, like, man, um, uh, what, what are you doing now that's directly impacting that on the negative or the positive? Mm -hmm. So if you're out there t selling dope, you're out there getting it in, well, bro, tell me, please explain to me, how is it selling dope moving you closer to your kids, moving you closer to your mama? Because mm -hmm. actually, it, the likelihood of you spending more time with them is, is like next to none. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to move you further away. So mm -hmm. I would say, find out what your core values are. Mm -hmm. What's important to you? Mm -hmm. And then do things to help you move closer and closer and closer to your core values. Mm -hmm. the, you know what, you, you got me, me stuck for a minute, but as I was sitting here listening to you talk about core values, another thought came to my mind too, and I want you to talk. Uh, to this point for a moment. As you're find, figuring out what your core values are, Troy, yeah. um, and, and so when you're doing that, that means you are at a place where you're ready to grow or change, whatever that looks like, right? But how important is it to begin to connect with people who are in those different places that are kind of foreign to you? Does that make sense? Yeah, rephrase it. How how important is it to let me make it let me let me break it down. How important is it for you to begin to change your circle? Oh yeah, yeah. You know, because you know. you're talking about core values. That's uh -huh. foreign to some people. Right, you right, know, yeah. they're like, what? You yeah. know? Right. Um, I think I think you gotta. For me, it was it was critical. You mm -hmm. know, I was I was I was I was a straight gutter hood man. Mm -hmm. Like that's that's just what I know and that's what I love. Mm -hmm. um, and so even today, so I have to find myself around people. That were doing the things that 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 I wanted to do. That's mm -hmm. why the core values are super important. Okay. It's like, well, who are who's doing what I find important? Mm -hmm. Who's doing it well? Yeah. Who's spending time with their family? Yeah. Who's who has a reputable business? Who um, who's tra who's traveling, doing things that I would like to do? Because mm -hmm. those are important to me. Mm -hmm. So then I surround myself with those people. Early on, all I knew, my network of people were only bangers and, and killers, and that's what I know, you wow. know. And so if I if I wanted to be a businessman, which I did, mm -hmm. then I need to surround myself with some with some businessmen. I yeah. Need, I need to find those cats that look like me, that come from where I come from, but then they achieve a level of success. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just turning on Magic 104.9, I want to say thank you so much. You already know uh, what time it is. You're in the two o'clock hour. So guess what? It's in Life Now Radio with your host Teresa M. Blakely, and this is the fourth week of the month and it's men making moves in Grand Rapids and we're talking to uh, Troy Evans he's a pastor uh, he's a husband he's an author he's a international speaker <laughs> and he's such a humble man and I absolutely love that listen you know you talked uh, earlier to the point of one of the things that really began to capture your your attention as you were growing up evolving into the man that you are today was uh, father fatherhood or the yeah. lack of fathers um, you're leading this amazing um, I don't even want to call it a church right. but you're leading this amazing church called the edge right. and you're you're having this opportunity where you're able to um, become friends with with the young men um, that that are, are are called to you if I can put it like yeah. that um, as you're running the edge Troy how do you believe the work that you're doing is is directly tied back yeah. to that absentee father or the lack of fathers yeah early on we we sat and we wrestled with whether or not we we're going to call it a church or not um we wrestled mm -hmm. with and we call it i'm the, trying to act the, like i don't right, know right, you right right i right, know i know <laughs> you know you remember it's the edge urban fellowship blah blah blah, blah. Uh -huh, but then uh -huh. I, I had to reconcile like yo wait a minute yeah 
um, there's nothing wrong with the church. It's just what people made of the church. Yes, come on. So they just put a bad name on it. So mm -hmm. um, it's like if we go back to what the church did, and the church is what we know of, our, of, of hospitals, what we know of, of our education, what we know uh, of social justice. Even in, uh, in Grand Rapids today, majority of your community services that are happening in the mm -hmm. city is happening, driven by and paid for by churches or Christians. Mm -hmm. So it's like, let's just get back to what we do, get mm -hmm. back to the basics, meaning that if it's my daddy's house, well, then why don't we open it up for people in the community? How about that? Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like let's not let's be a parish. Let's have a parish model mm -hmm. versus the idea of like let's close these doors and we open on Sundays. For us, Sunday service is like two percent of what we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it 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 melt your face off. You know what I'm saying? Literally, music is loud. <laughs> it's like yeah. a conference every single week. Okay. Um, uh, but that's only literally. There's only one person that spends 90% of his time on that day. The rest mm -hmm. of us, we spend 90% of our time outside of church of Sunday service. Mm -hmm. So what we do is and we said, well, how do we get um, dudes? So we, we, we've broken all the rules, right? And then that is is that when, when, when people need a place to go, they come to the church. Wow. Whether they stay there or not for long term, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what we do. Because yeah. it's like if it's your daddy's house, why can't they go in the refrigerator? <laughs> You know, it doesn't uh -huh. make any sense. And we, yeah. we, we decided early on that youth and young adults specifically don't have a place to go. Um, the church is designed traditionally for people that are 35 and older. Mm -hmm. And I do this all over the world. You know, mm -hmm. I assess churches, I develop strategies and come up with gap analysis and help them come out of the rut, hopefully, of what they're doing. And I'm telling you that the churches are designed for people at 35 and older. The way the sermons are designed, the way it looks, the way it smells. We're just Teaching. saying, like, what, what if we can be 1% of the churches that are designed for youth and young adults hmm. without any apologies? I love it. So I, that they I have a place. Because hmm. so what we know is that at, uh, at the age of 17, youth are 50% of youth are leaving the church, according to Barna Report. At the age of 17? 17, 50% are leaving the church. Why is that? Yeah, if you, if you punch down into that report, it says that because it's not relevant. Um, they said that that's also a place where they, they don't feel like they can be world changers. Mm. Meaning it's, it's a lot of talking at and a lot of talking to, but never equipped.